What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here back on this Wednesday night, January 18th, 2023. It's about 9.47 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And the latest quake looks like a 1.1 earthquake here uh, down in Southern California. The latest quake on the globe. Now, looking at space weather activity real quick, uh, just kind of covering this right off the bat. Seeing some flares kicking up here. Uh, from a couple different sunspots, including one right now uh, from our massive sunspot, 3190. Notice the bright feature here, indicating a current flare coming in. Now, this is not a big one. Kind of looks like it's coming into the uh, upper C flare category. Uh, prior to that, we did have an M flare kickoff, a little great M flare uh, from a sunspot that was positioned up here. So a lot of these regions starting to get fairly active uh, in terms of the solar flare potential right now. Uh, there is a couple new sunspots developing on the northeastern limb that we're watching. Uh, but right now, I think the main threat is these uh, Earth-facing sunspots that harbor a potential uh, for some strong M flares and the potential still for an X flare. So we'll watch that. Uh, here's the latest imagery. This, this one is directly facing Earth. And this is the one that's currently producing that sea flare. So things may be ramping up right now. Um, it still does harbor some potential for some uh, strong flares. So we'll continue to watch that uh, throughout the uh, night and tomorrow. Uh, current look at the... F wow, it kind of looks like a face right there. Um, a couple different faces. There's the two eyes. If you take away 67 down here, got a little happy face here. Kind of tilted down, it looks like, with a uh, ginormous... Uh, sunspot uh, forehead there it looks like a lot of sunspots kicking off here on the Sun a couple of small coronal holes but nothing major uh, and that shouldn't really affect the three-day uh, currently unless we get uh, some massive CME headed our direction right now 15% chance for an X flare 60% chance for an M flare 99% certainty for a C flare and uh, again a couple of these sunspots here harbor some complex magnetic structure including 3190 the one that's currently producing that C flare and also 3192 uh, 3192 is off on the um, uh, let's see exactly where that's at 3192 all right yeah that's kind of up here in the mix of this large sunspot it's a little unsettled through the uh, area huge um, it's spread out pretty far but there's only a couple small areas within this um, massive sunspot region that harbors that uh, potential maybe for an X flare. Current aurora forecast here looks like some unsettled conditions occurring at the higher latitudes there into Canada. Lucky folks, once again, um, not expecting really anything major coming on here across the board. Looks fairly green in that department. And it uh, looks like we are seeing a little BZ component tilt, which is allowing, you know, there's not a whole lot of strong uh, density or any speed kicking up right now but there is a little bit of the BZ component tilting south allowing some of that stream uh, the current stream uh, to flow in and create some unsettled conditions there across the uh, northern latitudes all right what do we got here for earthquake activity seeing a little bit of movement around around the Palmdale area just off the San Andreas fault at 1.4 Pier Blossom California a little bit of activity also on the San Jacinto Fault Zone, stretching down here into Southern California. No major swarms around the San Andreas for, na for now. Uh, into the rest of California, got a little bit of rainfall coming in currently. We picked up, oh, looks like another quarter of an inch of rain. Uh, and that came in really quick in about 10 minutes. Uh, came down pretty heavy for a little bit, but uh, that was the last storm for a while. We'll go over that here in just a little bit. As uh, far as earthquake activity goes, though, things are relatively quiet across the Pacific Northwest. Very quiet. Uh, let me check out the trimmer and see what's going on here. Uh, for trimmer, wow, 409 epicenters of trimmer. That's a fairly good uptick, 409. Uh, pretty good increase in activity here in the southern area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Now, trimmer lately, over the past couple years, has been um, abnormal in terms of the regular uh, reoccurrence intervals that you know we normally look at, uh, roughly about a 14 month time frame, we see a lot of uptick normally around the Vancouver Island ranges, uh, but it's been abnormal as of late. 
And uh, it seems as though some of these intervals are getting much closer. We're not seeing that 14-month period. We're seeing just some irregular activity. Um, and not 100% certain what it all means. Uh, could it be pointing to something bigger? Could it be pointing to the Cascadia Mega Quake 9.0? Who knows? Uh, it's something to watch pretty closely and study. Uh, I've been keeping track of the trimmer for quite a while now. And it's uh, definitely been acting... Uh, very odd recently so we'll continue to watch that and see how this plays out either way most of the activity here southern end of the cascadia subduction zone today Let's see what else we got uh, one earthquake up here in the yellowstone national park a 2.0 coming in 10 o'clock this morning and the latest seismograph stations here let me key this up make sure we have the latest looks as though um yeah, not a whole lot going on. There's that two-pointer that kicked up this morning. Uh, since then, things are very mellow across the state of Wyoming. Rest of the country, pretty quiet. Oklahoma team down a little bit. Texas as well. Nothing going on across the eastern portion of the country. Of course, we, we did have that earthquake this morning. 1.4 near Centerville, South Carolina. Right in the major seismically hazard zone around Charleston, South Carolina area. Puerto Rico area, um, the swarming has actually come to a halt down here, which is rather odd uh, because for the most part, when we look at the swarming down here on the Puerto Rico area, it's consistent. Uh, the last 30 days of activity, and even if we were to go back past a few months or past couple years, there's always a consistent swarm here around the Puerto Rico area, southwestern portion, and about 350 earthquakes uh, in the last 30 days of all magnitudes in this region. And um, it it kind of looks like everything's coming to a stop. So I'm not for certain what's going on here. Um, it is in between the position of a couple different troughs. Of course, you got the really deep Puerto Rico Trench up here north and the Marotos Trough down here to the south. A little bit of subduction zones all around here. And there's definitely a lot at stake here in terms of the plate dynamics and the pressure building up in this region so um, we'll keep an eye on this there is a couple earthquakes kicking up to the west of the Mona Passage area into the Dominican Republic 4.4 coming in this afternoon time period and some further activity up north of the Puerto Rico area very close to the Puerto Rico Trench so something uh, definitely something brewing out here um, quiet sometimes in certain areas is not good we'll continue to monitor that uh, for some activity. South America, absolutely quiet. Not for sure what's going on there. Um, a look here at the EMSC model on the globe. Let me bring this over so you guys can see. Uh, does show some twos and threes, uh, and that would explain the absence of earthquake activity. Uh, USGS only reporting 4.0 and above for this area. Uh, but yeah, they're definitely still seeing some activity, it looks like, in the South America region. Puerto Rico Trench. Um, as I mentioned, about the same as what the EMSC is reporting here. All right, the big island of Hawaii, a little bit of activity well off the west coast, a 2.3 coming in this afternoon. Looks like uh, 29 kilometers deep for that earthquake. And most of the activity uh, looks like it's confined to the Pali area, although we're getting a little bit of movement up here, southeastern edge of the Mauna Loa flank here, the southeastern flank, showing some activity uh, kicking in. Nothing major, but this earthquake occurring about 7 kilometers below the surface. Uh, so we'll watch that here and see how this plays out. Just kind of weird, you know, it's uh, been quiet for so long, kicked up there for a couple weeks, and then quiet again. Of course, Kilauea Volcano is still continuing to erupt after a, a brief pause. All right, uh, Western Pacific. Things are... Uh, somewhat quiet. We did see a couple more earthquakes around the Japan area and into portions of the Izu Trench. Very shallow earthquake activity. Now we did see some movement down here in the deeper regions of the Izu Trench here uh, throughout the week, including that 6.3, 405 kilometers deep. So we are watching for some potential uh, larger scale activity upstream of uh, the deep earthquakes. And that tends to happen quite a bit. Not all the time, but it's something to watch considering the amount of deep activity here in this region recently. 
All right, uh, down here into the Indonesia area. Of course, we had that seven pointer coming up uh, last night. Just about ready to drop off that 24 hour threshold. So what do we have since then? It looks like the last earthquake was a 4.6 this morning time period, about 54 kilometers deep. Nothing really happening around the Philippine Trench northward. Um, look at the EMSC model here. Looks like we did have a 3.4 up here in the Philippines area. Uh, but things relatively quiet up there across the Philippines currently. Uh, the Java Trench. Last earthquake was a 5.1 back here. Back prior to the trench area. This is definitely a good indicator of some stress uh, in the region. 5.1, 10 kilometers deep prior to to the subduction zone and that was about uh, 10 o'clock this morning no further activity to note here across the uh, rest of the plate boundary that's kind of been the consistent story here over the last few updates although we did see a 3.7 coming in to the area let's see exactly where that's at uh, stand by for a second so we pull up the EMSC model it looks like the uh, Myanmar area India border 3.7 coming in 15 kilometers deep uh, definitely not a big earthquake, but um, I expect here this very quiet zone, pretty well extensive zone of quietness to pick up here uh, very soon. Further west, though, um, last earthquake, 5.0 into the Greece area, the Aegean Sea, coming in about 10 kilometers deep, and uh, also some activity uh, further to the southwest in Greece, 4.2, some prior activity in the Mediterranean Sea, and also into the areas of Iran. Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there, folks, tonight or today. Alaska, um, very typical movement, it looks like. Not a whole lot of unusual activity. It's a major plate boundary, so of course we're going to see earthquake activity out here. Not a whole lot. All right, uh, let's see what else do we have. We checked out Yellowstone. We checked out uh, Tremor activity. Go ahead and uh, well, we obviously check out space weather, but I do want to give a quick glance here again, see if this is kicked back up. Uh, when these sunspot regions kick up, they tend to do it very rapidly. And uh, this is definitely a little bit of a noticeable increase here over the last couple hours with uh, a couple numerous sunspots. So we'll watch that and uh, see how this plays out. Again, that upper sea flare coming from this massive Earth-facing sunspot region. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out weather activity real quick. There is our last storm of January. Uh, and I say that because the long range models look fairly uh, quiet here for California. Uh, again, it gave us about about a quarter of an inch of rain in about 10 minutes. Of, it was a pretty good downpour and a lot of cold air coming behind this cold front system and uh, bringing some snow with it. But as we look forward through the weekend and into the week, Things are relatively quiet. There's a low pressure system here trying to come in, uh, but uh, we have massive high pressure off here in the Great Basin area that is kicking any storms away from California currently. Now it looks as though, again, this is staying pretty consistent here into February. There we go. That's a pretty good storm system there. I like it. Uh, got a couple weeks of drying out, but it looks like here in the 1st of February, uh, things could be getting rather active once again here for the West Coast bringing in some further sufficient snowfall and of course rainfall here filling up these lakes hopefully as uh, we open up that storm door back up again let's hope fingers crossed um it's definitely something to watch these long range models are you know it's kind of kind of iffy the uh, g let's see hold on a second here yeah let's go back here to the I'll stand by for a second here I'm going to bring up the northern hemisphere i'm not really i don't really want to see that um but for whatever reason that wants me to view that maybe i can go over here and see there we go um kind of a longer range model system here showing a way out high pressure system looks like it's well off into the gulf of alaska as well notice some very cold air coming down into the northern rockies and it looks like the midwest as well uh, that's about January 22nd, 23rd time frame. And uh, towards the end of January, things start getting interesting here with a very massive low pressure system 
uh, creating some uh, unsettled conditions here across the majority of the country. We'll see how this plays out, of course, as uh, as uh, you know things progress here. Uh, total accumulated precipitation. Now this covers a good portion of the country from about now to the end of the month. California, though, is drying out. This is mostly activity right now. Uh, but there is some activity kicking up along the east coast there. Looks like uh, some rainfall mounts into uh, the Carolinas and uh, Florida region. So getting some some uh, precipitation over there towards the uh, end of this month. Let's see what else is there. I think that's about it, folks. Um, hope everyone enjoys their night. Uh, the National Data Buoy System. Check this out. Nothing unusual going on across the board here and uh, I know we didn't check out New Zealand so let me go check this out here real quick kind of skipped over them not intentional but uh, sometimes we get uh, sidetracked here looks like a couple twos over the last uh, few hours or so 3.4 North Island uh, nothing major it looks like uh, the volcanic drums here across the area shows uh, fairly calm conditions across the majority of these volcanic drums currently. Alrighty, have a good night guys. Stay safe out there and um, keep an eye on the sun. Well, don't literally don't, uh, unless you have some solar, you know, solar equipment. You gotta have that if you wanna see all these sunspots, but uh, keep an eye on the charts, so to speak. Um, and uh, we'll watch these flares and see if they kind of kick up as the uh, massive sunspots are currently facing the Earth. We'll catch you guys a little bit later tomorrow. Have a good one. Peace out.